In Hollywood history, the 1950s were a crucial period. Legends were born, silver screens shone, and dreams came true. We'll take you on an extraordinary journey to explore those moments which made Hollywood the center of entertainment. Come with us and watch the most beautiful color photos from Hollywood, California, 1950s. Hollywood and Vine, circa 1955. Hollywood and Vine is a name that dates back to the early 1900s when it was just a tiny town outside Los Angeles. At first, the intersection was called Sunset Boulevard and Prospect Avenue. The name of the intersection changed in 1910 to Hollywood Boulevard. In 1911, it was renamed Hollywood and Vine. The new name was intended to show the importance that the entertainment industry had gained in the area. Brown Derby Restaurant Brown Derby was a restaurant chain in Los Angeles. One of the most famous was in the shape of a derby hat, an image which became associated with Hollywood's golden age. Robert H. Cobb and Herbert K. Somborn, former husband of Gloria Swanson, started the chain, and Wilson Mitzner opened the first Brown Derby on Wilshire Boulevard in 1926. Hollywood Boulevard and Orange, circa 1952. Hollywood Boulevard and Orange. This image shows beautiful vintage cars parked in the street and people enjoying Los Angeles. ABC Vine Street Theater, circa 1966. This building, originally constructed in 1948 at a cost of $3 million as a studio for radio and TV, was built to house the facility. Through the 1950s, this was Los Angeles Channel 2, now KCBS TV, the station's original location. KCBS is among the oldest TV stations on the planet. Don Lee Broadcasting signed up for the station, and it was licensed as an experimental TV station by the FCC in June 1931. On December 23, 1931, the station was on the air. By March 1933, it only broadcasted one hour of programming each day, from Monday to Saturday. Carolina Pines, Jr. Carolina Pines opened its first restaurant at 4619 Melrose Avenue in Los Angeles in 1923, 24, or 25. Even restaurant advertising included all three dates. Rose Satterfield opened a small tea room and cafe with only 12 seats. She moved to Los Angeles with $600 in her pocket, hoping to find prosperity. Satterfield was confident that she'd be able to provide authentic Southern cuisine in an area lacking it. The restaurant was a great success. Grauman's Chinese Theater, circa 1959. After the opening of Grauman's Egypt Theater in nearby Los Angeles, the original Chinese Theater opened its doors to great success. The two were both built in exotic revival architecture. The theater was built by Sid Grauman and his partners over a period of 18 months starting in January 1926. It opened on May 18, 1927 with Cecil B. DeMille's The King of Kings. The theater has hosted many premieres since its opening, including the 1977 release of George Lucas's Star Wars. It has also played host to birthday parties, corporate outings, and three Academy Awards. Ciro's Nightclub William Wilkerson owned Ciro's, a club on Sunset Boulevard located in West Hollywood. Ciro's was opened in 1940 and became a favorite night spot of celebrities. After closing down in 1960, the nightclub was reopened in 1965 as a new rock club. It changed names several times before becoming the Comedy Store. Chinese Theater Forecourt, 1950s. This image shows the hand and foot impressions of famous actors on tiles at Grauman's Chinese Theater. This is a great way to immortalize stars who brought smiles to millions of people around the globe. Hollywood and Vine, 1960s, American Airlines. Thank you to the person who took this photo with color film. Standing near the southwest corner, looking up past the American Airlines offices in the Equitable Building at the northeast corner of the Capitol Records Building, we can see the Dupar's Diner sign just in front. Hody's Restaurant, Hollywood and Vine, 1950s. Hody's Family Restaurant at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Hody's Restaurant Group signed a lease in 1955 for property at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. 
the restaurant group remodeled the building extensively. The Coco Tree Cafe was there from 1932 to 1940, and Melody Lane was there from 1940. Hollywood Boulevard, 1960s. Here's a picture of the Hollywood Boulevard sunset in the 60s. Hollywood Boulevard runs east-west through Los Angeles and Central Hollywood, and is home to attractions like the Hollywood Walk of Fame, the Ovation Hollywood Complex of Shopping and Entertainment, and many other tourist spots. Coffee Dance, Hollywood and Highland, 1950s. Coffee Dance in San Francisco was a famous all-nighter in the early 20th century. It operated first as a dining and entertainment establishment and then became a speakeasy during the 1920s. In the 20s, its attitude was nicely expressed by the statement, there will always be singing and dancing, even when there is a fire. Hollywood Boulevard and Wilcox, 1950s. The Warner Building, now known as the Pacific Building. Warner Brothers was originally known by that name. The studio opened the building on April 26, 1928, with a Vitaphone early talking film, Glorious Betsy, featuring Conrad Nagel, Dolores Costello, and others. The Warner Brothers-owned radio station KFWB placed its transmitter towers atop the building. They remain there to this day. The original lettering, Warner's, though covered with Pacific, can be found inside each tower. Vine and Sunset. Hollywood Recreation Center Bowling. Image of Vine Street from Sunset Boulevard looking north in 1939. There were no cars in the street, so it must have been very early and possibly a Sunday. It's possible to see the Hollywood Recreation Center building on the left today. The facade of the building was saved, but much of the rest was lost in a fire. It's still standing on Hollywood and Vine at the corner where Broadway Hollywood was. Today, it is a loft building. Vine and Sunset, 1950s, Radio City, NBC Building. NBC's main studios had been located in San Francisco since 1927. However, with the growth of Hollywood, NBC decided to move its headquarters to Hollywood at the intersection of Sunset Boulevard and Vine Street in 1938. NBC wasn't the only one to have its West Coast radio operation in Hollywood. By 1950, CBS and ABC, as well as Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System, had all built their own facilities. Hollywood Boulevard, 1950s, Roosevelt Hotel and Cinegrill. Theodore Roosevelt was the 26th president of the United States when the hotel opened in 1926. The hotel was funded by Louis B. Mayer, along with Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and Sid Grauman. The cost of the project was $2.5 million, about $42.1 million in today's dollars. It is located in Los Angeles' Hollywood District at 7000 Hollywood Boulevard. The oldest continuously operating hotel in Los Angeles, it opened its doors on May 15, 1927. Mother of Good Council Parish The Augustinian Friars founded a Roman Catholic school and parish in Los Feliz, Los Angeles in 1925. It's located just beneath the Greek Theater and near the historical Griffith Park Observatory. Our Mother of Good Council's mission is to create a Catholic faith community that cares and works together. It welcomes people from all walks of life and cultures. Saharan Motel, Sunset and Alta Vista, 1950s. Sahara Las Vegas, a casino and hotel located in Winchester, Nevada on the Las Vegas Strip. The Merulo Group owns and operates the hotel. There are 1,616 hotel rooms and a casino covering 50,000 square feet, more than 4,700 square meters. At the intersection of Sahara Avenue, the Sahara anchors Las Vegas' northernmost end. The northernmost monorail station is also located here. Sunset and Vine, 1950s, Wallach's Music City. Glenn Everett Wallach opened his first radio store in Los Angeles in 1932 and went on to open five more shops around the city. He opened two recording studios in the 1930s. Wallach's founded Music City in 1940 at Sunset and Vine. Wallach's Music City was shut down in 1978. Capitol Records Building, 1950s. 
The Capitol Records Building is also called Capitol Records Tower. It's a 13-story tower in Hollywood. It was designed by Louis Nadorf of Welton Beckett Associates. The construction began shortly after British company EMI purchased Capitol Records in 1956. It was finished in April of that year. Capitol Records Tower is located just north of Hollywood and Vine and houses Capitol Records West Coast operations. It also contains the Capitol Studios recording studios. The Capitol Records Tower has been designated a Los Angeles Historical Cultural Monument. The building has been called, quote, the world's first circular offices. Sunset Boulevard and North Clark Street, 1960s. Sunset Boulevard is a 1.7 mile or 2.7 kilometer stretch that runs through West Hollywood in California. The Sunset Strip stretches from West Hollywood's eastern border near Maumont Lane to its western boundary at Phyllis Street. Sunset Strip's restaurants, nightclubs, and rock clubs are well known, but so is its colorful array of billboards. Well, that's it. In the 1950s, Hollywood was at its golden best. Dreams became reality and legends were born. This golden age has been a true pleasure to experience with you. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Next video coming soon.